All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. This is a 10.25 inch Android head unit supplied by C-Cane. It's very, very similar, if not the exact same thing as an RS Nav head unit. I just got done installing it. And if you want to know how to put one of these into your car and what I think about it, stick around. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Cameron with AutoC7 Owners. And tonight I'm going to show you how to install this 10.25 inch Android unit, which was supplied to us by a company called C-Cane. I think that's how you pronounce it. Maybe C-Cane, Cycane. I'm not sure. I'm going to call it C-Cane. Um, they reached out to me, full disclosure, asked me if I would do an install video showcasing their product. Uh, looking into it, it would appear to be very similar to the RS Nav unit uh, that does the same thing. And so they sent it to me. I did not pay for this. I don't really know what to expect i'm hoping that it works uh, well and i'm going to give you guys my honest opinion but let's talk about what comes in the box so i've got everything laid out here everything in front of you or in front of me here is what comes in the box so we'll start in the back here this is the actual head unit the actual display here it's a nice clean unit from what i can tell um, it also comes with a new trim piece because when we get this installed, the OEM trim piece won't fit anymore. So we've got this uh, new trim piece here and then we have all our wiring harnesses. So let's talk about what these wiring harnesses are. So these first two here, these are antennas. Okay. This is a 4G antenna. This is a GPS antenna. So those are going to plug in to the unit and those will just get kind of set behind the dash there. They have enough cord. If you want to run these antennas somewhere else, you can, but I think they'll be fine just underneath the dash. After that, you've got this kind of wiring harness dongle that has two USBs and it also has a SIM card holder. So what this does, one USB, it would be used to run an aftermarket camera of some kind if you wanted to. The other USB is going to be used for updating this head unit whenever there are updates, as well as running uh, Android Auto. Uh, if you didn't want to run the wireless version, I believe this runs a wireless version, but if not, you would have that uh, USB to be able to run, you know, run a USB-C cable or whatever you want to into this unit or anything else that you might want to run a USB powered or uh, supplied piece of equipment into this Android unit. So they're just gonna have that. This little piece will plug into that unit there. So let me move that out of the way. And then we have this nice big mess of a wiring harness here. Um, let's start down here at the end. So these are called quadra locks. Uh, there's huge four sided things. So what's going to happen is this is going to, this piece right here is actually going to go into our OEM harness. That's going to connect into the back of our OEM CD player. You'll see what that looks like. And then this will get connected, um, into there. Then this piece here, this is the HVAC bypass. That's all I know what it is. Same thing. One end is going to connect to the OEM wiring harness. The other one's going to connect into the back of your, of your HVAC panel unit. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I know I have to do it to get it to run. This right here, these wires are supposed to go into this speaker here, this center speaker. Um, I'm not going to wire these up. I think these are just if you wanted uh, some type of little alarms that that unit can do to come through that center speaker. That's what these would be used for. Um, I'm not too worried about trying to get those installed, so I'm probably just going to leave those bundled up. And then over here, this piece right here is what's going to plug into the back of the actual unit here and connects everything else to it. This right here, this plug right here is important. This is your MMI plug. This plug right here will plug into this one uh, off the back of the unit. Other than that, we're not gonna be installing anything else that is bundled here. All this stuff is for extra cameras and all sorts of other aftermarket goodies um, that we don't need to worry about. So I'll probably just zip tie these all off together so they're not kind of flailing around and uh, just clean it up a little bit. Let's talk about the tools you need to do this job. Simple job. This actually doesn't require too many tools and no specialty tools. Uh, I suggest you get a pick set. These come in handy with removing certain plugs as well as pushing and pulling around wires behind the dash and hard to reach areas. Um, extendable magnet might come in handy if you drop a screw or something. Always good to have one of these on hand. You're going to need an 8 millimeter socket. Uh, this setup worked really well for me and messing with the dash. I think it'll work with me for this. So I've got a long socket. i got an extension and a quarter inch ratchet. 
You're going to need something thin and sturdy that you can use to remove the HVAC panel from. You'll see what I use this for. A thin pry tool will work as well, um, but I've got both of these. You will need some kind of good gentle pry tool to remove the dash trim around your OEM in my system. And then uh, it's always good to have a set of needle nose pliers laying around. You never know what you're going to have to grab. I've also got some zip ties laying around in case I need to clean up any of these wires, shorten them, uh, shorten them up or anything like that. So I'm going to get into the car and show you what to disassemble. We're going to take everything out first, and then we'll talk about how to run wires and put this in. Okay, so let's go over a quick rundown of the pieces we're going to be removing before we actually start taking everything off. Uh, we are going to be removing this vent piece, this dash trim piece here. Then we're going to be removing this whole vent assembly. After that, we're going to remove the OEM MMI unit. After that, we're going to come down here and we're going to remove this HVAC panel. And then after that, we're going to remove this multimedia head unit, um, your CD player, the thing that your SD card slots are in. We're going to be removing all of that stuff. And then after that, we're going to go over to this side of the car and we're going to end here and drop down this kick panel so that we can get some room over here to run some wires. Uh, so I'm going to get started on doing all of this. To remove this trim panel, it's actually pretty easy. You're just going to get a good pry tool. You're going to come back here and just pop that out. There's a couple clips on each side. Pop those out and it comes off. You can toss that up and out of the way. To remove your vent display, we're going to be removing two bolts. They're eight millimeter bolts. There's one here. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. There's one on the right side here. And there's another one on the left side here. You're going to remove those two. And then after you remove those two, you can start to pull it out. But don't just yank it out because when you do, there's a wiring harness that has multiple connections in the back. And also be careful because you don't want to break this piece. So as it comes out, you're going to reach your finger behind and just kind of pop this little piece out. And then disconnect the wiring harness that is behind. And you're going to pull this off and just set it out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and get that removed. I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. You can see there that trim piece, how it's got that little tab that connects into this. That's what you have to pop out. And then here, as I pull this out, just kind of be careful. You can see it's got these wiring harnesses. There's one over here on this side, and it's just got a little tab you push in and pull out. On this side, You've got this one that has two little tabs you're gonna press in and pull out. And then you've got one little tiny one here. So I can get a light on it. It's kind of hard, there you go. Uh, that one you might have to use a little pick to get at it and pull out. Now on mine, there's nothing connecting the wire to it, but when it was stock, there was this like a piece, I had a couple pieces of tape that held this to the actual uh, air vent and I just cut those pieces of tape so that I could completely remove it. So I'm gonna get these last two connections off and get this out of the way and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now with the dash vent out of the way, we can see what we need to do to remove the MMI unit itself, the actual display. There's two more bolts. There's another eight millimeter bolt to the right and another eight millimeter bolt to the left. You're gonna remove those two and then this will pull out. It just comes straight out and you have a couple uh, wiring harness attachments in the rear. I think there's a total of three. I'll show you those, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this removed. All right, so we have our MMI display out of the vehicle and you can see there are three connections. There's one there. There's one there, and then there's that one back there. So I'm gonna get those removed. They're all simple, just little pinned uh, tabs, nothing crazy difficult. I'm gonna get all those removed. Uh, you can see right here, there used to be a zip tie holding that on there. I went ahead and cut that because I'm gonna have to remove this completely. So I snipped that zip tie to be able to remove the wiring harness completely from the display. So I'm gonna go and get all of those removed and move this out of the way. All right, we got the display removed and we're left with just the wiring harnesses sitting here. This is your display wiring harness. You're definitely going to be using this piece uh, whenever you plug in the new one. I'm not sure if we're going to be using either of these. I don't think we are, but we'll see. This harness and this harness connect to your air vents. So the next step is to start to remove these two pieces. But before we do that, you need to get your shifter pushed all the way back into drive. So just turn on your ACC power. And then what I'm not gonna show in the video is me leaning over and using my hand to push the brake and push this down into drive. 
All right, we've got our shifter out of the way and you're gonna need this to create this extra room. That's why we push this out because when this comes out, it's it's pretty deep. There's a, a piece to the back of it that's pretty long. So if this is all the way forward, you'd have a real hard time pulling it out. So we need something to be able to get in and pry on the sides of the HVAC panel. I've got this trim piece tool and this should work all right. Yep, so you just go in there real gently, push it in and then gently pry out. And when you do that, let me get this out of the way real quick. It just slides out and there's some connectors on the back of it. You can see all these. There's three, all three of these have little red locking tabs. And so you're just gonna pop their locking tab out like that. And then you press on the, get all the way out. And then you, once you do that, you press on the release tab. So you can see that's out. And then this is the release tab here. And hold on, let me see if I can do this with my hands. There you go. So you're going to do that for all three and then just set this aside. Once the HVAC panel is removed, we need to remove another 8mm bolt that's underneath the head unit. Sorry for the harsh light, I just want to make sure you can see this. So when I get underneath here, you can see that 8mm bolt there. We're going to remove that one. Once you remove that, this should just pull straight out. But when you start to pull it out, don't yank it out because there's a lot of different uh, connections from a wiring harness that are connected to it. We got that bolt removed, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to pull this out a little bit. Now, on the left and on the right side, there's two different wires attached, and they're easy to remove without even having to see them. You just kinda of have to feel around here for it. You'll find the wires, and then you'll find the actual connections, and there's tiny little tabs on both of them that allow you to depress and remove off of it. So um, just find them with your hands, remove those two. I'm gonna go and get that done because it's kind of hard to do with just one hand, and then I'll pull it out and show you the rest. All right, we have the head unit pulled out. Uh, as far as these cables will go, when you first pull it out, they might not want to come out this far. And if you just reach in there and kind of finagle the harness around, you should be able to get them to come out just a little bit more. That makes it easier to work on. So that big gaggle over there, that's that quadra lock that we showed on the other one. There's a release tab that you're going to undo and pull up. And as you pull up, it'll kind of push that whole thing out. And then these over here, this red, or I'm sorry, the magenta and the blue ones, they have these those kind of white tabs. You just pull those out. Those are locking tabs. You pull those out and then press them and pull them off. And then on the gray and the yellows, those can be a little bit tricky, but they have just little push tabs and then they pull out, but you just might have to use a little bit of force. Just be careful. So we're going to go ahead and get all this removed and pull this head unit out of the way. Oh, real quick. forgot. There's that one last little guy over there and that's a simple push, uh, tab release there. That's an easy one to get out, to get out. So these are kind of a pain to just do with your hands. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to get this, like get a little pick and you see that little window there. Just get this pick in there and push it in. And let me stabilize this. Just kind of push this in. And when you do that, you can just pop it out and then it pulls off. And that is the easiest way to disconnect those. Okay, so now we have this whole mess of of wiring harness stuff and I know it looks intimidating but I'll hopefully be able to help it make a lot more sense for you because realistically you're only messing with a couple of the plugs displayed here everything else is going to go right back into the car as uh, it came off the next thing we need to do though to prep is drop down that kick panel over there because we're going to run some wire over there because there's not a lot of room back here um, let's see if I can get this back down so we're going to run some stuff to the back there. We're going to cram as much as we can, but we're going to have to also run some stuff back there and up into this area. So we're going to prep that by getting that removed over there. I'm doing this as I'm going, so kind of figuring it out, but uh, we need to drop this panel down. There's two 8 millimeter bolts. There's one on the left. There's one on the right over there. So I'm going to get rid of those and see how much I can drop this down. And, uh, you know, if I need to go even further, we'll assess at that point. Found one more bolt, another eight millimeter bolt here holding it. So I'm gonna remove that and see if it moves. Okay, so once I removed that one, uh, that bolt that was on the inside of the fuse panel, I pretty much just gave it a good tug because I could see that the only thing keeping it connected was um, 
a little connect that was on the inside here, but, and it just kind of came crashing down, which is fine. It kind of startled me, but nothing broke. I'm going to disconnect this uh, wire from the back of my, uh, that's my light switch. I'm going to disconnect that and then I can just pull that completely out of the way. And now we've got pretty good open access um, to the backside over here. We should be able to run wires, hopefully unimpeded. Okay, we're getting pretty close to where we're going to start putting things together. The only thing that I would suggest that you pre-wire would be your two antenna wires. These are a little bit tricky uh, to get on here. So I would go ahead and get both of those uh, connected here, 4G on the one next to the blue plug, the GPS uh, next to it. It's clearly labeled back here and it's backwards because it's upside down, but I would go ahead and get those on there before uh, bringing it over. Everything else you're going to do in the car. So what we're gonna try and do now is we're gonna try and take that hoss of a quadra lock, that really big beefy dude there. We're gonna try and push him out to the left of the back of that opening. So you see that circle opening, we're not going through there, but right behind it, if I can get this there, where there's plenty of room right behind it there to push it through and then over into that open side or just got rid of that kick panel. And then after that, we're gonna be taking our wire harness, connecting it to there and then feeding it through in the back there and getting it routed to the correct places. So that's all I'm gonna work on right now. I wanted to show you the angle of what you're trying to do here. So this is coming in underneath the um, steering column. And if I can get the light back here, trying to get an angle, you can see that right there, what's on the light is on. That is our plug, because I already pushed it back behind that wall. And so now I gotta come in on this side, sorry for the bad lighting, and get my hand in that tiny little space and grab it somehow and pull it through. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's a little tricky. You will cut your hands reaching back here. There's a lot of sharp plastic, so just be careful, uh, but you can do it. Okay, I got it. What made it actually pretty simple was sitting in the driver's seat, uh, as you can tell, putting my right hand in through the cavity of where the uh, MMI CD player head unit was to kind of push the cable with my right hand and then reach my left hand in through there and kind of grab onto the clip and work its way through. And I was actually able to get it through pretty easily. So the next step is going to be connecting the wiring harness to that and starting to feed the wiring harness up through here and getting the wires to the perspective places they need to be. Okay guys, I got the first bit of the wiring harness through. So the first bit I pulled through is the one that has that, hold on, let me turn down my light, is the one that has that uh, white tab there. Uh, that's the one that's going to go into the back of the unit. The way I did, I just followed from the quadra lock. I pushed it through, reached into the back and grabbed it with my hands. You can see that orange line and the other one going to the right. So if you go, go straight to the right, and pretty much back behind that wiring harness, there's a spot that you can come up behind your vent and you can grab it with your hands and pull it through the top there. And I pulled it through and pulled everything associated with it through up there. Uh, I went ahead and I got the speaker wire, that pink speaker wire I said I wasn't gonna use. I realized that the speaker right there, the access to it is just right there and I can access it here by popping off the uh, vent uh, cover. So I'm gonna, do that real quick and you'll see how easy this is just shallow angle just get a trim tool and go in there that comes off and then we have our speaker that we can remove from the top and we'll be able to access the wires to plug this in so i guess i will go ahead and do that might as well do it correctly since i'm back here so i'm going to get all that knocked out and then i'll start feeding through the rest of the uh, wiring harness so that was actually a lot easier than I thought. I've got my speaker out. Uh, by the way, the screws that hold this in are five and a half millimeter hex head screws or, or bolts, or whatever. So you need a five and a half millimeter socket. That sounds bizarre and something like, holy crap, where am I gonna get that? But surprisingly, my metric toolkit had it in there. So it's just two of them that hold it in there. You pull those out, pull this up, the wire will come out really far. You can disconnect it. And then once you disconnect it, you reach back in through that window back there and you just grab it, pull it through, and you can see here uh, that the stock wiring harness, let me get a light on it. Um, let's see here, you can see right there the stock wiring harness 
I've got plugged into the purple cable or the pink cable and then the other end of that went back through that window up and connected to the speaker. So I'll be able to plug that back in or screw that back in, put all that back together and uh, start routing the rest of the stuff. Okay, the next one that we just pulled through was our HVAC bypass cable, which has these two kind of smaller square ends and that orange wire. Once again, I just followed the quadrilot cable in, came through the very back there. And then the important thing here is when you bring it through, you don't want to go above this plastic shelf right here. You want to run it underneath because the HVAC wires come underneath it. The multimedia stuff is going to go above it and you want to leave room for the cables there. So ran it underneath so that it could connect with the HVAC cables. The last one we need to push through is the other end of the quadrilock that's going to go into the back of the head unit. And we're just going to run that right behind here on top of that plastic shelf and get ready for the head unit to come back in. Okay, we have the quadrilot cable pulled through. You can see the only thing left on this side is the OEM quadrilot cable, which you can see my zip tie there. Uh, the, the locking clasp seemed a little loose, so I just put a zip tie on it to make sure it doesn't ever come loose. And that'll get tucked up underneath there. And we can put the kick panel back on, but uh, everything is ready to install all of the actual hardware for this unit. So I'm gonna go get everything ready. All right, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is install the new uh, display. And so what that entails is getting this plug connected into this. And then, actually, I'm sorry, the big one obviously goes into the big side. And then this plug up here with our USBs, that's going to go into the little one. I'm going to get those connected, and I'm going to have to figure out a way to run these uh, USBs to where I can access them. And uh, honestly, right now, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I was thinking about trying to run it into the glove box somehow, or maybe run it out to where it's just kind of hanging off on the side here where it's out of most people's view, but it's still accessible for me. Uh, so that's, that's going to be, I think, my plan. But I'm going to go ahead and get all that stuff connected get this wiring harness connected into here remember only the the one single antenna plug is going to go into this then everything there's going to be a good amount of wires back here there's a lot of room to tuck them up underneath here okay so your antennas will go back up underneath there as well as the rest of your wiring harnesses so that's what i'm going to do so this is just a quick rundown of where I'm running all these cables. So everything for the most part is just getting shoved up underneath and into the back there. I've got the antennas kind of stuck up here. Um, but my USB cables, what I did was I put them through this little port here and they came out and they're right here next to that quadra lock. Um, so they'll be accessible from the panel, uh, from my kick down panel over here. So that's where I'm going to have those. I'm not sure which ones for the camera and which ones for doing updates and whatnot. I'll have to play around with that and figure it out. And then I'll mark them as such. I, I do wish that they were marked like USB one, USB two. So I knew which one did what, but, uh, we'll be able to figure that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it up and temporarily put a couple bolts in to hold it up and out of the way. And we'll start working on the rest of the stuff. Okay, so the next step is going to be reconnecting your uh, MMI head unit here, and it should just plug in almost like factory. We've got that quadra lock from the wiring harness in, and you've got all the same plugs that you, you took off from the back of it. So you're going to plug all those back together and set it in there and bolt it up. And after that, we put the HVAC uh control panel back in and that's going to be the same thing too the only difference is you have this bypass now and what you're going to do is this plug from your HVAC will plug into one of the ends of this you'll tuck that underneath there plug one of them into the back of the HVAC panel plug everything back out or everything else back together and push it back in and then it will be time to start buttoning everything up a real quick note before we get this plug back in the quadra lock it is ex it's really important that you get that tab pulled as far back as you can and you want to get this whole thing seated into the back of the head unit as deep as you can before collapsing that locking tab back down if those connections are loose it can create issues with your android unit so make sure that is fully seated and locked don't forget when you're putting this back in to reconnect those two harnesses on the left and the right back into uh, the underside here. It's really easy to do by field, but just don't forget about those two. That way you're not confused why you have two extra things here once you put everything back together. 
All right, so it's time to put the HVAC panel back together. So this is your HVAC bypass uh, harness. You're going to connect the female end of that to the male end of the OEM one. Remember, it's got this red locking tab. So let me see if I can get these together one-handed. Oops, sorry. All right, so push those all the way in. And you hear it click, and once you hear it click, push that tab down. It's a pretty hard tab. So we've got that in. So what we can do with this now is we can start to tuck this back out and out of the way. And once you have that tucked away in the back there, you can get your HVAC panel and connect the uh, three connections just like the normal ones you had on when you took it off and push it back in. And then we'll be done with all this here. All right, we've got everything put back together here on the bottom. Uh, all we have to do now is put our vent back here. So what we need to do, I put these temporary bolts in here. I'm going to back those out because those can't go there yet. Uh, we need to put those in there, but I just wanted to have that there temporarily. Um, but as you can see, the unit's on. We're going to have to do a couple of calibration things to make sure it's working with the car. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this all buttoned back up and then we can go over here. We can work on cleaning up underneath there, but we're almost done with this install. When you're getting ready to put all this back together and you're gonna put in the new dash trim piece, you gotta do one quick thing before you just go push it on. So here's your OEM one. And on the back, on these tabs, you see these little metal uh, clips here. There's four of them. If you look on the back here, this doesn't have any of those. You need to remove these metal clips from your OEM one and put it on here so that this will actually stay connected to your uh, dashboard or whatever you wanna call it. I'm not going to go super in depth on how to actually use the unit. That'll be another video. This is just the DIY install video. One thing I am going to show you uh, because it would drive you nuts if you didn't know this. But right now you can see we have the LED MMI button. This is what toggles between the Android unit interface and your OEM MMI interface. So if we press that button, that's what it looks like. And that doesn't look too good. You know, that might make you think you got a wire messed up or something. So touch the screen again. Well, here's how you fix it. Click on the settings button in the bottom left here. Once you're here, you're gonna hit system. Once you get into the system menu, you're gonna press on factory settings. And then it's gonna ask you for a password. Uh, password. password is 1314, okay. Now, once you are in here, there's a section called car mode. Press car mode. And right now it's on whatever this is, reserved one. You need to find your car. So for us C7 folk, there's two options. Uh, actually, there might be three options. There's, yeah, so there's 12 to 15 C7 RMC, 16 to 18 C7 MIB2, and if we go down here, 12 to 15 C7 3G MMI. So this car has a 3G MMI system, so I need to press on that one. Uh, shows that the door is open, but it's on the correct car mode now. So if I back out all the way here and I go back to the Audi MMI and I click on it, it shows our normal Audi MMI. And from there we can, you know, move around into whatever we need to move around in uh, as you would on your OEM system. And then to get back to your Android unit, you just go and tap the screen and it'll brings you back to it. This is one more thing that you guys need to be aware of when you get this unit up and running on your car. So uh, if I were to put my car into reverse right now, you could see there's nothing. There's no reverse camera showing and it's just blank. Uh, so we need to fix that. So let me put it back into park. What you wanna do is go over here, hit settings. At the very bottom, hit reverse view. And you can see mine's on this AHD camera CAN bus. That's what the check mark is. Just find the one that says Audi OEM CAN bus. You wanna click on that. And then after that, when you go into reverse, you should have your camera. So uh, my cameras are working, it's just really dark and my camera's covered. So, uh, but that's how you get your reverse camera working and all your other cameras working whenever you go from part to reverse while using the Android unit. Okay, so what are my overall thoughts about this unit now that I've got it installed and running? Um, first off, from the get-go with the packaging, it's packaged really well. It comes with all your necessary wiring harnesses. There were really no pieces left over. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, the only big complaint that I had is that there wasn't a detailed manual that came with this, something that said specifically, 
this is what this part of this wiring harness does. This is what this part of this wiring harness does. I had to do a lot of my own research online to figure out exactly what to do. And I got most of that information from videos about RS nav. Um, speaking of that, from what I can tell, this is the exact same unit as an RS nav 10.25 inch screen down to what it looks like, down to the passwords, down to everything. It's the exact same thing. Um, performs really well. It's fast. I haven't had any hiccups in terms of performance with it. Um, but obviously I've only had it in the car for about a day now. Uh, the other thing that I wish that there was something in there about is some kind of guideline in terms of showing, you know, one, telling me, hey, if you have to adjust things, here's the password. I just got lucky and found that online. That didn't come with it. Um, so there's those little kind of things that were missing from this that hopefully CK will be able to put into future packages. But performance wise, it works really well. Um, I've only had the car for 24 hours. I've gotten Android, uh, auto wireless to work but i'm having an issue with it working and playing audio at the same time i'm waiting to get an email back to see if i can fix that but otherwise it, it works really well with that um, i'll have another video that kind of goes through some of these features more in depth this is just a diy install video in terms of the install total time takes about an hour especially if you know what you're doing from watching this video uh, relatively straightforward and pretty simple. Uh, I think it, pretty much anybody should be able to do this install. If you have any questions about this device, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I think it's a great product so far for what it is. And, you know, it could be a competitor to RSNAV, just doesn't seem to have the support that RSNAV has, especially being an established company in the Audi community. But it is another option for you guys. So check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below.